Hi, welcome to this example on solving trig equations. Now in this example, we've got solve 2 sine x cos x plus cos squared x equals 0 for x between 0 degrees and 360 degrees inclusive. Now whenever I get a trig equation that equals 0, one of the first things that I'll check is does it factorize? Because if it does, Generally, we can put each of the factors equal to zero and then solve the equation from there. Now, in this particular example, cos x is a common factor. So I'm going to factorize it by pulling out cos x as that common factor. So I'd have 2 sine x and then plus another cos x. And that would equal zero. So what that means is I can either say that this factor, cos x, equals 0, or I can say that the other factor here, 2 sine x plus cos x, that that equals 0. Now, when we look at the first factor equaling 0, so we'll just write that down, cos x equals 0, this is a very easy one, because... We inverse cos both sides, so we get x equals the inverse cos of 0. It's an easy one because really we should know this answer. If you did this on a calculator, you'd find that you get x equals 90 degrees. Let's just write that down, that therefore x equals 90 degrees. Make sure, by the way, that your calculator is in degrees mode. There are other solutions, though, from 0 to 360. And we can get those, say, from the graph. That's one easy way if we can't remember what they are. And that is the graph of y equals cos x. What does that graph look like? Well, when x is 0, it starts at 1. And when it's 90 degrees, it's 0. Then at 180 degrees, it's minus 1. 270 degrees, it's naught, And at 360 degrees, it's back up to 1 again. So where is cosine x equal to 0? Well, for values of x at that point there, 90 degrees. And this point here, 270 degrees. So there are solutions, 90 degrees and 270 degrees. OK, well, let's have a look now when this other factor, 2 sine x plus cos x, that factor equals naught. So we'll stick this down here, that when 2 sine x plus cos x equals 0. Now, how do we solve this equation? Well, obviously, we can't factorize it any further. There's no common factors here. But we need to get this into one trig function. And we can do that by dividing through by cosine x. Because sine x over cos x, you should know the result is always tan x. So if I divide each of the terms by cos x, then what I therefore have is 2 sine x over cos x, which is tan x, cos x over cos x, which is 1, and 0 divided by cosine x is still 0. OK, so I've got one equation now with one trig function in it, tan x. So I should be able to solve this. So all I need to do is make tan x the subject by subtracting 1 and dividing both sides by 2. So we end up with tan x equals minus a half. So to work out what x is going to be, I need to take the inverse tan of both sides. And so that's going to be the inverse tan of minus a half. So this is not one that is a common result, one that we should remember. So I'm going to need a calculator for this. So before we start, though, what I'm going to do is solve this by, or find the solutions, that is, by the quadrant method rather than the graphical method. It's a method I generally prefer over graphical method because I find it's a lot quicker. 
So I draw my quadrants and write 0 degrees here. Remember this is 90, 180, 270, 360. And we should know that what trig functions are positive in the various quadrants. In this one, they're all positive. This one, sine is positive. Down here, tan is positive. And over here, cosine is positive. So in this one, we've got tan is a negative value. So where is tan negative? Well, tan is negative in this quadrant and this quadrant down here, the second and fourth quadrants. So in the usual way, draw a line in that quadrant, mark in that angle, draw another line equally inclined to the horizontal line in this quadrant. So we've got that angle there. Mark those two angles in. We're going to need them. What angles do we need for x? Well, starting from here, we want in the range 0 to 360. So we start from here, turn round to the first blue line. So that's a possible solution, x. Start from here again and go all the way around to the next blue line. It's so all the way around to there. And that's another possible x. So we need to use the calculator now and what should we expect the answer to be? Well, I could have used the calculator earlier, but I always think it's better if we can draw this diagram and anticipate what the answer is going to be. We have a better understanding then. And the calculator is programmed to give the smallest angle starting from here to one of these blue lines. So when we use the calculator, it's going to actually select this turn down here, a negative angle. So expect a negative result on your calculator. I'll show you, look. Here's a typical scientific calculator. And if we press the inverse tan, shift tan on this one, of minus 0.5, OK, what do we get? We get this, minus 26.56. So as expected. So it doesn't come as any surprise. So let's put that down over here. x equals minus 26.56 and so on. OK, that's in degrees. Notice I haven't rounded up at all here. OK, so let's get rid of the calculator now. And uh, that means that on this quadrant diagram, this angle in here is, well, in theory, it's minus 26.56, but I'm going to just take the positive value of that. OK, we'll be using this in a moment because that angle is 26.56 degrees. And so is this one over here, 26.56 and so on degrees. So if I want the red angle, all I've got to do is just do 180 degrees minus the 26.56. So what does that give us? Well, that will give us 153.43 and so on degrees. We need the green angle here. Well, that would be 360 degrees minus this 26.56 odd degrees. If you do that on your calculator with no rounding, you'll get 333.43 and so on degrees. So all we need to do now is just wind up the problem, summarize all our angles in ascending order. So what we've got is 90 degrees as the smallest angle from up here. And if we take the next angle, this one remembers out of range, but the next one is this one. And we'll round that up to one decimal place. Don't forget to say that you've rounded up to one decimal place. And then the next one up would be the 270 degrees up here. That doesn't need any rounding. It's an accurate answer. But this one does 333.4 degrees and give that to one decimal place. The accuracy is up to you or it might tell you what accuracy you need to do in the question. Anyway, I hope that you've been able to understand this particular method and can apply it to a lot of the questions that you do.